man. Great. I Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. This is the European Volleyball Show. My name is Rob St. Clair, and it's a very exciting time as we lead up to the Champions League Super Finals. And I'm joined live from Canaliano by a very special guest who doesn't really need any introduction, given that she is the back-to-back -back reigning MVP of the Champions League. But I'll introduce her anyway. Miss Paola Egonu, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's an honor for me. <laughs> it's it's an honor to have you. It's been it's been a great Champions League season so far, and I think we kind of caught you on a good week in the schedule because it's been several weeks since you last played Champions League, and you've got a few weeks more till Ljubljana. But also, you get a couple day break here before the finals of Italy starts. So, uh, what is your what has this week been like for you? And what I guess what's kind of the training schedule for the Italian League and Champions League? How does that work? So right now we are focused on the Italian championship and the league and we are in the final. So uh, that's where we are focused right now. But then sometimes, you know, we talk about the Champions League and things we're going to do in the future. And I like it. Like we are here right now, but then also thinking about the future. That's a lot to, to balance as a team because you obviously have to focus on the match that's coming up next. And funny enough, right now, you don't know who you're going to play next. That will be decided. Yeah. That will be decided tonight in Italy. But like that versus then, you know that you've known for weeks that you're going to play Vakif Bank again in the yeah. finals. And I guess that's a good transition to talk about the fact that this is a rematch. It's crazy. I think it's the first time ever that in Champions League, we have a rematch on both the men's and the women's finals in the yeah, same year. That's that's hilarious. Which is remarkable. Well, I'm, excited. I'm excited because they bet uh, they beat us in the club world championship. So let's say we're getting ready for revenge. It's gonna be a good match for sure. The last one for me in Conegliano. So I'm excited. I want to leave head hot and winning the last game with my club. So I can't wait. It's going to be a fun game for sure. It will be a very fun game. And you're absolutely right. Because in last year's Champions League final, you and Cuneliano beat Vakif Bank 3-2. to two. And then in the Club World Championship, Vakif Bank beat you 3-2. to two. This kind yeah. of feels like the, the series that we've all been looking forward to over the last year or so. You, your two teams have really kind of dominated women's club volleyball. And now to get it again, the same matchup on the biggest stage, is just, just a, such a treat for us all. So what can you tell us about the way that your team adjusts after having played Vakif Bank last year in Champions League, earlier this year in Club World Championships, what do you expect about the matchup to be the same versus what do you expect to be different? Well, I think both games were different because mm -hmm. the team, our team was different. So I would say we were in a period where we're trying to find our game, you mm -hmm. know, our system and there been a solid team. So I think for in that way, it was easier for them. Um, I think it's going to be different because now we're more like together fixed. sure yeah yes not that we weren't but you know when you have two new players and like you need to figure out how they play how we play how they react to pressure and everything so i think we are going to be all ready for that game good I, i'm glad you brought up pressure because that that's something that i've talked about a lot the last year or so around volleyball like with the olympics and with all these gigantic tournaments that have come up the pressure and the expectations that you and your teammates and all the athletes in the game feel based on, you know, we, we should win this match. We sh aren't picked to win this match, whatever it is. And you, you brought up that when you have new teammates, you have to understand how, how they respond to that. Yes. What is that like when, when, like from one club season to the next, when your team kept, I think five of the seven starters, like your team kept a lot of the same players, but those couple new pieces are really important. So what is the process like to understand how your teammates respond to those situations? Um, just playing those games and, you know, seeing maybe how they act and react a week earlier. And then, you know, you start to see because everyone get anxious, you know, and there is who hide it better and who don't. <laughs> but 
yeah and then the emotions get there and it's tricky you know like it's a timeline and you don't want them to like get more anxious you know it's just like trying to understand how to make them feel better and how to us make feel chat feel better for them i don't know it's understanding them has a person this is what i like to do yeah and so how them. right and you're i mean how old are you 23 22 you've 23 yeah. you, you've already played in such such gigantic tournaments like the olympics like champions league twice you've been in those situations before even though you're only 23 and you have felt those pressure situations and you've come out on top in a lot of those matches before so the the players on your team that have done that before how do you go about helping or like trying to you know support the new players on your team that haven't been in those situations before well, I think this year was worst because, you know, we won all the important trophy. And so I could tell they came and they're like, okay, they won everything. I need to be able to help them win more, you know? Yes. So that won and it was so bad. Like a lot of expectation from them. And like, normally what i did was like okay like we are in this we all want to win i maybe don't know you so well but for sure i'm going to help you and it could be a word her hug or asking you if you need something if i, sh I should watch something just like that that's i'm glad you brought that up because as part of your run through champions league last year and winning in italy last year you and Corneliano went on the greatest win streak that club volleyball has ever seen. 76 matches won in a row, which is just unthinkable. And I that totally makes sense that you bring up like the players that came in. They came in to a team that had just won everything there was to win the previous year. And you were in the middle of that win streak. So yes. my question is, when that win streak finally ended mm -hmm. against Firenze in Italy, like back in December, did your team actually kind of feel better after that ended did you feel like there was a relief of some pressure i felt so much better wow. so much i was like okay we lost it's okay it's a new season new team let's just move on and work and win together like this team it was like we were the shadow of the team of last year and it was being heavy for us so yes like okay we were pissed we lost a game against Firenze because it was our fault. Like they played super good, but we did a lot of mistakes. And, but at that point it was like, okay, it's done. Like we don't have the pressure. We need to win to keep going with the record, you know? Yeah. Cause once you, once you had already broken the all time record, maybe that was, that was kind of all you needed to do. And something that we talked about back when it happened was, you know, everybody wants to win. Everybody wants to win every match. But I'm sure that your team and Coach Santarelli and just everybody around the club in Corneliano is thinking more about the long term, about, you know, the championships that you want to win, about repeating in Champions League, about winning Italy again. So one match, one regular season match, if you lose that, that's really not that big of a deal. And it sounds like that, that may have even been a good thing for your team when that happened. Yeah. Like, I was really grateful also for what the president said. He was like, okay, like, we lost this game. It sucks because we always want to win, but, like, this is part of our training to be good at the right moment, and right. it's not now. So we felt really relieved. Yeah, Yeah, and that's what the, the clubs, like, the really great clubs in Europe, both men's and women's, do that really well. They gear their seasons and their trainings around – being really, really good at the right times when it comes to championship season. And I think your club has absolutely mastered that because, <laughs> you know, last year you went you went undefeated throughout the entire year. You kept that incredibly high sustained level the entire season. But this year you didn't go undefeated, but you still, it, both in Italy and in Champions League, rose to the occasion at the end of the year when it mattered the most. So how would you say that your coaching staff and just your whole organization how do you organize that? How do you how do you set up that schedule so that your team gets gets to its top form when it matters the most? Well, being an athlete, it's difficult to understand because, for example, when you do weight, okay, 
Uh, so our coach is like, okay, we need to push right now. It's not going to be easy, but in the future, you're going to feel better. So we are like building our strength for after. So, and then it's just how you combine everything, weight, ball, rest, and who plays, you know, the player that need to rest, the player that can play. And and they, they, they do it really, really good because I wouldn't be able, like, being an athlete, you always want to be at your best performance always. And you don't understand that, okay, maybe now you're not going to be at your best, but in the future you're going to be. So they do all the work. <laughs> we <just> do it <laughs> every time. Well, that, that's that's exactly how it should be. They the, the All the staff around you organizes things and puts you, the athletes, in position to be your best when the best matters. And we, you and I were talking about the idea of rest right before we came on the show because – the, in the schedule both just really just in the club schedule and then you jump immediately into the national team season like right after Champions League is over rest is something that is very difficult to come by for a professional volleyball player so when you're when your team is able to set it up like times for you or some of your teammates or you know move those things around for you to get a break it's really really important right tell tell, tell us about that like how how difficult is it for you to sit out a regular season match like knowing that you know, I'm sure you want to play all the time but yeah, knowing that that's the best the thing it's the worst like I I hate it like maybe my coach will come to me and be like hey okay you're going to play half game and then half game you're going to rest because you know you need to rest and I'm like yeah okay and then during the game when 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 it's my time to go out I'm like fuck I don't really want to go out like I'm enjoying <laughs> yeah out. so it's hard it's hard to sit on the bench and be like okay okay I'm happy I'm cheering for the team but I'm like I would want to play this game yeah I think that every athlete would probably feel the same way like I I want to be out there this this is yeah. this is my team this is what I do and especially a player as important as yourself that's that's probably not easy but the trust that I'm sure you all have to have in the, the, the people making those decisions, knowing that it's going to be the best thing for you, that that probably takes a long time to build that. So I wanted to ask about in in the club game, something that I've noticed the past couple of years is that there's been sort of a shift towards players signing longer term contracts where like when I started to understand the European club scene, really players were, were signing one year contracts and oftentimes would move clubs every single year. And that's really difficult to do to rebuild from the beginning every year. So, what what do you do? You, do you have any? Do you have a similar thought? Have you felt that the the game is sort of shifting to sort of building over multiple years? And does that help a club team like Cuneliano to do that? I don't know because it's been five years, so <laughs> it's been a little for me. But like for me, I prefer to maybe sign more than one year or maybe one plus one. Uh, first of all, to see if I feel good there because it's right. really important for me to feel good and like where am I, like the way we work and everything. But then I prefer the long-term contract because you get to know better your staff, your coach, you get to improve a lot. And I'm not the type of person that like changement a lot. Like yeah. I like, a stable situation, my comfort zone. I know this and this and this, how to work, how they do things. And I don't know, I think it's personal, but then if you go to a good club, they're, they're interested in the future. You know, they always want to get better. And I think that is really an intelligent thing to do. Okay. You find the perfect players for your system of game, and then you keep improving it. And, Konegliano, it's pretty good at doing it, and like we could see the results. Yeah, we certainly have seen the results, and you're right. It does seem like Konegliano is a club that's very good at that, that builds and doesn't necessarily go and get the best available player, but the best available player to fit within your team. Does, is, yes, do you that, agree with that? That's really, really important. Like Sometimes I see setters that are good in fastballs, and then they're put in a situation where they need to pass high like balls, yeah. that the high balls and i'm like she would be much better in the system good for her you know mm. but then i also understand that at some point like the team has done its work and you need to start afresh so 
Yeah, that's that's very interesting, the, the dynamics of club and how all the pieces move around. But I personally really like when a club is at least mostly the same players year over year and you can see the the way the team over the long term improves and that team's like that identity and that style really get defined because of the players that they add. Yes, I totally agree, for sure. So uh, looking forward to the Super Finals itself, like how... <laughs> We, we talked about the schedule a little bit because you're getting started with the Italian finals, which is a best of five series that starts on Saturday, regardless of who wins the, the Monza versus Novara match tonight. We, we know the first match will be on Saturday. Then even if that series goes as long as it can, like five matches, you know you'll still have a week between the end of that and to travel to Slovenia to take on Vakif Bank again. So you mentioned before, like you're, you kind of have that in the back of your head. But yeah. once that week happens, or like once the Italian series is over, what mm -hmm. what shifts for your team to to take on a team like Vodka Bank in only one match? It's not a series anymore. I've been playing series like the entire playoffs. Just one match. How, what's different about that for your team? You can't make mistakes, so yeah. it's okay. Like now, it's the hard stuff. It's now real. we <laughs> try and like do it perfect in every action and yeah and it's and, it's not always necessarily going to be perfect but yeah in oh, in, in one like, match the the margin yes, is but you know the practice that week it's going to be harder and harder that is like we need to be ready so th i think that's what shifts yeah I don't know. so you certainly already in your young career have had quite the impact on the Champions League. You've already won this tournament twice. And I mean, two years ago in 2020, when it all got canceled, there was a good chance that you were going to meet Vodka Bank in the finals again before uh, we weren't able to play that season anymore. But already the impact that you've had on Champions League, winning twice, being MVP twice is is amazing. I want to ask what, what Champions League, the tournament, and winning it means to you. What effect has it had on your career, and what's, what's your perspective kind of on the tournament with, with what you've done in it so far? It means a lot for me because it's like, okay, I play in the Italian League, and I want, like, I want me and my team to be the best there, but I also want my team to be the best in the European you know, uh, League. So it's important for me. It's important that we can get there. Wait, I think it's getting dark. I should on the line, I, the light. Maybe, okay, yeah, maybe. go ahead. Huh? Yeah. Go, go ahead, take your time. Sorry. Really quick while Paula gets gets to that, we want to remind everyone that the Super Finals is going down in Slovenia, in Ljubljana. You can buy your tickets right now. It's on Sunday, May 22nd. Uh, both the men's and the women's finals rematches all in Slovenia. Uh, so if you can go in person, you should. And Paolo, that's another thing I wanted to ask is because last yeah. year in Champions League, we had no fans in the arena. Last last year, the entire club season, there were no fans. The Olympics, there were no fans. And we've slowly but surely started to getting back to full capacity crowds. Yeah. And it feels like even just like commentating games from the other side of the world, it feels different to have yes. that energy in the crowd. What are you expecting in a match like the Super Finals, even in a neutral country of Slovenia? What are you expecting the crowd? What difference do you think they're going to make? It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. People that love volleyball, fans from Conegliano, Vakif, all together. And it's going to be fun. I would say like Belgrade. Yeah. That's that's what we're hoping for. We're we're hoping for a, a crowd. I hope so too. <laughs> it's nice to play when you have the all crowd cheering for you or against you. Like it's okay. It just yeah, it just makes you makes wow. you feel it makes you feel a little bit more, you know, intense and engaged and like yeah. it like it really matters. What what was it like last year playing with no fans? Like conversely, what that must have been very, very strange. Or had you gotten used to it through the season up to that point? But like a, a, a match like the Champions League finals, it deserves for there to be fans there. What was it like trying to keep the, the level that high with nobody in the arena? Well, I got used to it. I started to like it because it was like peace. You know, you're more focused mm -hmm. in the game. But then um, at the end, when you're playing important games, like the crowd, you feel maybe when you enter and you're like, oh, wow, 
that's a lot of people but then when you enter your game like for me i'm like out i don't hear noises i'm just in the game the ball like <sighs> you're just you're, you're in the zone that's it's yes. i've always been so impressed by players like you that can do that 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 don't get affected by all the chaos that's going on around you it's it's what makes sports so amazing yeah it is it is but i think a lot of players are like that i don't yeah. know i think it's automatic at some point like you just get used to it yeah you just get used to it that that's that's true and like already at age 23 you've played in a lot of matches like this and you probably are quite used to it but it is fun to see crowds back in the arenas and we're we're really hoping that the crowd in Ljubljana is is gonna be Champions League finals caliber and I trust that it will I can't I can't wait also it means like we are finally get into the normal yes. way of living and it's amazing like it's always more hope yeah it, it does it does feel a lot more positive a lot more hopeful to see things go back to normal like that and uh, athletes like yourself that have been able to play sports through these last two years like given all the different hurdles you've had to jump over to do that but athletes and sports that have gone on since the world has been locked down have really been a hope to a lot of people and yeah. it's just going to be one big celebration in slovenia to be able to do that all in person again i can't yeah. wait yeah, it's me too. Same. I'm so happy about that. So, Paula, before we get you out of here, you've got uh, we we know that Corneliano is once again in the Scudetto finals in Italy. So, congratulations on that, uh, defeating Scandici in in the semifinals. But you don't know who okay. your opponent is yet. You have Monza and Novara, both Champions yeah. League teams that are getting set to play in in like ten minutes from right now. Yes. Uh, that that yeah. third game in that series to decide who plays against you. Uh, First of all, will you be watching? And what are, I guess, what are your thoughts on that match and that matchup? Absolutely. Like, as soon as I'm down here, I'm on in the TV. Um, it's going to be a fun game for sure, where both of the team are going to push because they both want to be in the finals. Um, I don't have a preference. Like, I just hope the best team wants and I wish them good luck. It's going to be fun. I can't wait. Yeah, it will be fun. And regardless of who Conegliano ends up taking on in the Italian finals, it, it will be a great show because of the, the best of five, the you know, the intensity of the finals. It's it's just the best. And then yeah. as soon as that's over, we get to we get to look forward to Slovenia in the super finals. <laughs> yeah. Wow, what what a month May is going to be. Amazing. Yes. It's always the best part. I like it. Yeah, championship season. This is what it's all about. So yeah. uh, anything else, Paula, that, that anything you want to say to the fans and any other questions you want to answer? But before we get you out of here, we can go just turn on our TVs and watch some more of all of this. <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you to all the fans that are following me and cheering me up. It means a lot for me, especially in the bad days. And I just hope to keep playing and giving you a lot of good emotions through my game. Well, thank you so much for all that you do to do that. Every day we see you play. It's just a treat to watch you, Paola. And good luck the rest of the season in Italy and in the Champions League Superfinals. We cannot wait to cover it. So thank you so much, and we can't wait to see you play the rest of the year. Thank you so much, and thank you. Have a nice day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on the European Volleyball Show.